I when I have it set up to when I post on Instagram, it also posts on Twitter using um, if then then that. Uh, yeah, yep. So as long as you use a hashtag, it, two hashtags you have to use: hashtag shot on iPhone and iPhone macro challenge. Okay. And then Apple will, of course, do you know start to collect all the probably hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of photos that people will post. Uh, given the amount of iPhones out there, even the you know even the amount of 13s that are out there now, uh, or 13 Pros that can do this, that and then they'll ha- it, now they'll pick a winner. Fingers crossed. It'd be nice. Mm-hmm. Kind of doubtful, but be nice. Uh, and I've seen uh, people who have been picked in the past, and they'll do things like, well. You know, we're going to use your photo on this giant 30 foot billboard in New York City to promote the <laughs> iPhone. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It actually, in the old, I'm trying, I'm trying to think, was this back on Twin, Tiny Shutter or since we switched over to iPhoneography podcast? We talked to someone who was actually picked by Apple mm-hmm. and she had her, it was an iPhone 6 or six plus that she used to take this photo and they used it on a giant, literally a 30 foot billboard that you see. And it was in New York city and said, shot an iPhone Mm -hmm. and you do get compensated for it. Just like anyone else, you know, just like any other photo they use. So it's just, you know, it's also, it's a nice thing to see when you, if you're trying to get either inspiration or not just overall inspiration, but like, Oh, that's a technique that someone may have used, or that's a setup they use to take a shot, or there's an angle that if I want to think about macro shots, you can then use, um, you can then search either Twitter, Instagram by that hashtag and look at all the photos and you can say, oh, that's a good idea. I should try that. Or I didn't even think about that. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you don't get into the nitty gritty, it's at least something to get people started on the way to get thoughts on what can or because honestly it's uh, the imagination is where it all starts Mm -hmm. so if you don't even think hey i'm going to try and go in this direction you don't even know that direction exists and you can get that by looking and seeing what other people have done so you sent over a uh, a, a, a sample here of, of macros as well. Can you talk us through this for the audio? Sure. Uh, and I'll go sure. and I'll go and play it here. One second, we'll okay. get started. So all right, there's a there's a look at all the icons on your on your phone. Yep, uh, yep. <laughs> and uh, we'll load that yep. up. So so this is a screenshot of me actually. Now you could, this is just my back patio, mm-hmm. and I did it in the afternoon so there's enough light. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just wanted to take a picture of the wicker and the. Uh, snow on it now you notice as we close do you notice that right when i got closer you saw a little bit of a a shift yep. right there yep that was, I was talking that about, yeah. that's the switch into macro mode mm-hmm. so that like i said this is just taking photo on a table outside now you can either do i took a photo with the one x lens mm-hmm. but then i also switched to the wide camera and took a picture right on the edge and it's also relatively switching. Like when you see that kind of shift, that's it switching the, the actual lens it's using, correct? Uh, yes. And it's also switching how the um, the focus is done. So it actually through the, ex- the, the ultra wide, it'll actually f- change the focal length so you can actually get that close. Because unless you're using a third party camera, but built in, the fact that you can just get close and it automatically knows you want close and it'll automatically focus. Yep. Yep. And the, the other thing to keep in mind, this is true. I don't know if it's only with the 13s or with the newest version of iOS, you take a photo and it's doing enough computational fo- computational work. It takes a half a second to a second to get your final, final photo. Mm-hmm unfortunately. So it, it, if you so take a photo, it's taken that second, but also remember, it's doing a lot, a lot yep. in that second. Um, and the, we've talked about how high end the chips and everything are on these phones. Like it yep. is processing a ton of stuff. Yeah, it's it basically almost going pixel by pixel of the photo, comparing it. Um, because the way Apple thinks of the camera is not three. It's not three. They don't think of it three different lenses. They think of it as a camera combined that just right. happens to have three lenses and we'll use information from whatever we can to kind of combine mm-hmm. 
So if you take a photo and you look at it immediately, uh, it, you go, eh, it doesn't look that great. Mm-hmm. Let, let, let it wait a half a second. And then you get the, like you say, if you go back to the um, kind of the end of the video real quick. Oh, um, yeah, hold on a second. Yeah, that's okay. You can see the, the final image I came back with. Here, and I'll pull that up here for you guys on audio in a second. So there, you're still in, 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 the, in the taking the picture mode, I think, here. Okay, yeah. And then yep. we'll come and, back to the picture. Yeah. And this is, I mean, we're looking at snow here, right? Like, and it's yeah. looking, like, I'm looking, I'm seeing the detail on the snow and everything. Okay, and, and if you, and here it comes, there, you go. And there we go. Yeah, you see, it looks like, it's, it looks like a bad web image load there. <laughs> and then the, yeah. well, you're zooming yeah. in on the snowflakes. It's, that's yeah. incredible. That's yeah. absolutely and the snowflakes, incredible. and if you look at the corner, you can see the wicker, mm-hmm. um, the plastic wicker, mm-hmm. and it, it's this is this is something we actually had when we moved into our old from the to this house from our old house. So it's at least seven and to be years honest, old. So you can see a little bit of the cracking there. What you're, <laughs> what you're showing me, you're showing me this on video, which means it's yeah. probably still not even as high quality as the picture actually is. Exactly. Right. So exactly. I mean, it's 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 ridiculous. And that's without any additional post processing. Mm-mm, mm-mm. So I my my two favorite are Pixelmator Pro, which can do some amazing things. Not not cheap, mm-hmm. not cheap, but does amazing things. And Polar, those are my two kind of go to editing apps. And those are both on. Uh, uh, on they're a- both on iOS. I don't know if they're on Android or not. Okay. But I know Android has its own thing because depending if you have a Pixel phone. And I know Google Pixel photo app is has its own built-in magic, mm-hmm. computational. Samsung has its built-in magic. Um, now, the one thing about nice about Pixelmator is I purchased it as an iPad app, and you got the iPhone app at no cost. Yeah, yeah, it's one and of the cool apps. It has tons of machine learning. Uh, it can up the resolution. It's it, it this is pr- this is pretty nice what it can do, even without the um, the presets. Just cor- you know, correcting things, sharpening things, and polar polar p o l a r r. I like their presets. I like some of the different things you can do with the different scenes and some of the uh, effects you can do, like de dehaz- what they call dehazing. Mm-hmm. Um, that one is free if you want the full features you have to subscribe but honestly I get so much out of the free features I haven't needed to subscribe uh, but also it's, it's these, are, these two are also good alternatives to not necessarily Photoshop but to um, the any like Adobe platforms that you want to do because you know there's different masks you do here there's, there's facial changes you can do in polar where you're like oh i want to do a face smoother and you can control it not just use an instagram filter type thing so how much are the uh in-app purchases on this don't they reveal them uh, on here somewhere they do and i forgot what it is but let me open Mm -hmm. it up here that's fine that's fine um we don't have to dig too deep into that but Uh, here we go okay so um a monthly subscription is 3.99 a month okay uh, but if you want to do a yearly subscription, it's twenty dollars a year. That's not bad. That's which not is a buck sixty-seven a month. Yeah. So it's, if you're using, if yeah. you like, and they give you a one-week free trial. So if you want to do the one-week free trial, you're like, oh, I really love all these extra features. Honestly, like I said, software is not cheap. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, it's cheap compared to what it used to be, but it's not cheap to make, or at least really good software. Mm-hmm. is not cheap to make so mm-hmm. supporting people who are putting forth a good product that's a good thing in my mind 